Hey, and welcome to Engineering Scale Models. I'm Jason, your host, and I do models and electronics, and Nintendo Switches, and testing out equipment, all that good stuff. I just need to do a little housekeeping here and make sure everything is working correctly. It says I am streaming, and I need to check to make sure that that is true. So, hopefully... It is working and everything is good. Okay, so there we go. All right, hopefully this is all good. I got my chat. So I'm going to be looking at the uh, MPH3 mini hot plate preheater again to do some more stuff. If you are joining the stream um, as a watchback video, um, I don't get a lot of people that come in the chat, so I try to try to focus more on the content of the video. So we're going to do some work with this heater again. I used it yesterday on a stream, and it allowed me to change the USB-C port. Hey, Phil. Hey, Diego. How's it going? Um, it allowed me to change the USB port it was a little bit easier. It took forever, but it was a little bit easier. Um, I got a package in. I think it's, yeah, I got a game card reader. Um, the replacement for it, for the, uh, I had one that was corroded. So I thought I was going to need to replace it, but it didn't need to be replaced. But I ended up getting a new one anyways. So I have one for future purposes. So. I'll put that in a drawer and we'll label that drawer later. So I don't know why I ordered one. That was weird. They were cheap enough. I don't know why I didn't order like two or three. That was that was strange on my part. So, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna take the connector on this, the um, let's see I can zoom in. Yeah, I know. That's going to be funny if I change one of them. I'll do a regular video on that. So I'm going to change this uh, this connector here that I damaged, changing BQ, which I was hoping I didn't do. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to try to use this preheater. If it goes away and I lose this stuff on the back of the board, oh well. I'll keep track of what it is and hopefully I can find it. It appears to be a... Six pin chip, two six pin chips, and a transistor, and whatever this uh, light sensor or LED type unit is. I'm not sure what that is. So, hopefully, none of that gets damaged and comes off. I'm going to heat it from the bottom and then I'm going to tease it with some heat and see if that pops it off and do the same thing with the putting it on. So, let's get a connector out. Oh. Yeah, they're, they're like two bucks now. I only bought one. I don't know why I did that. So, Joy-Con connector should be it right here. That is it. My well labeled container. Everybody drool over the labels. Ooh, we labeled. Ooh, there we go. Labels. So, there we go. Nice labels on that stuff. So, yeah, I know. I know, Phil. I'm getting close. 806. I know. Getting there. So, let's see here. Let's just get this connector out because we're going to need it. So let's get the connector ready to go. All right, so we got that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back out on the camera. Yeah, that's what that was, Phil. So I'm going to try something with the uh, with the preheater plate. So I need my USB-C cable here. 
find it. Oh, that is strange. Why would it not be in there? It is strange that that is not in there. So give me a minute here. That might be it. Let's check this one here. I hope that one is the incorrect size. Yeah, that was the incorrect size. That is extremely odd and I cannot find half my cables. Weird. Same side. Yeah, well, you know, I don't worry about all that. Yeah, I don't know why this one is the wrong size. And I don't know where. USB C cable thing is. Oh, that's not it. Oh, I normally don't lose things. But this is disturbing that I can't find this. That is really disturbing. I cleaned out my cable uh, box of stuff I didn't think I would use. And apparently, I took out three things I use all the time and didn't put them back. So, you know, there's that. So, okay, well, that is going to be, you know, we're going to have to do this a different way then. So, that stinks. All right, well, now back to this. So let's get out the heater and let's come up with a way because I can't run it off of the power supply now because I can't find my adapter. A nice silicone USB to C cable. So, yeah, I don't know. That's weird. It makes me almost not want to even do this. It's very irritating that I can't find that cable. 
I don't understand where it could have gone. It's very weird. I used it, I tested it with the switches. And then it didn't work. And then now I can't seem to find that cable. Not a big cable, it's a short cable. I don't know what happened. It's very odd how this happened. If it was a video, I would have paused the video and moved on. But this is live, so I'm not sure how to proceed forward. Let's do this. Let's go to let's go to eBay here. Oh, eBay. Okay, so let's let's bring up eBay and let's search for what I'm looking for because let's see, we need I think it's two point one millimeter to USB C. Let's see if we can find it. Um, it's kind of like on here. So USB-C. I don't want a right angled one. That's not what I want. I want a, right, I want a straight one. So they had to be all right angled. Here we go. Power adapter. This is like what... Um, Micromage repair uses. Yeah, I, I tried to set up that stream elements bot and I couldn't figure it out. Um, I said I had to make it an administrator and I didn't know how to do that. I, I was lucky to make you an administrator. So let's click on this here and add this to the cart. Uh, no, I don't need a protection plan on some adapters. So let's go back to shipping. See if we can find any cheaper. You know, I need one of these um, for the Surface laptop that can be USB C charged. Because currently, when the power goes out, I can't charge my Surface laptop. Um, but I could charge it if it was USB-C through a battery pack. I wonder, no, I never looked on eBay for this. Let's go back to the top here. Let's go to US. B C two banana banana plug nah, no matches found it was worth a shot that would be interesting okay let me go back up what was the shipping time on this thing here speed my car what's the shipping time on this oh it's coming from china oh, i'm not gonna get that anytime soon um oh, that's affordable let's go to amazon
Let's do uh, 5.5, 2.1. Millimeter USB C. Yeah. There's a long cable. This 2.5. See, this is like what I got. It's a 2.5. Instead of a 2.1, I need a 2.1. I don't see anything like that one adapter cable. Okay. Wrong way. I am having a hell of a time finding things. Okay, so yeah, it is a monitor. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm going to work on some stuff this week. I got that project done. I'm just waiting for it to come back from testing. Oh, here's what I need right here. Yeah, that's what I need right there. Um, let, me, let me get this on my phone real quick. Tuesday. Well, that's better than nothing. That's better than the stuff coming from. Um, hey, Aaron. A A O T O K K T Y Type C. Yep, there it is right there. All right. I'm just going to get these in the thing. Okay, so we'll be here Tuesday. So, all right, so they will be here Tuesday. So, Amazon was the way to go with that. So, let's go back to the camera. All right, there we go. All right, so Amazon's the way to go with that. Yeah, that, that's what that power circuit um, is for bench testing stuff. It's it, it's pretty it's pretty good. Um, I want to get one that does power delivery systems, that does different things like that. All right, let's. So we're gonna have to use this this other charger for this. And this has got a little bit of burnt flux on there. I want to try to get off. So. You know, I had some interesting um, comments about the um, power circuit. Some people left some comments on the um, circuit. Um, one was about if MOSFETs are capacitive. And um, no, MOSFETs are not capacitive. They will not store a voltage if the voltage is cut off. At least to my knowledge. That's, that's my understanding of how a MOSFET works. The only thing that can store power is a... Um, capacitor or capacitive coupling within a circuit but not as long as that was holding power and whatnot so all right let's see if we can get this back in here to mess with this batteries this little thing over here so now do i want it i don't know if i want it touching where it can knock off those components on the bottom. So let's try one level of height. No, that's that's too much. That's actually touching the board. Well, I don't know. No, if I'm careful, I think I can. I think I can make it work. Let's get the scope set up here. 
Let me get the scope set up. This is gonna be. Like I said, this is another experiment, like with the port. I don't know if this is gonna work. I'll put the scope on camera in a second. I just want to get it focused. Right, so. right. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to tease it off with air. So we're gonna put the scope on. So there it is under the scope. So I'm going to heat it up. I'm going to tease it off with air. And then we're going to see what happens. But I mean, basically this whole thing is to see what this little heater can do. And to see how much trouble I can get in with it. And that's my goal here. So I'm going to have to use my other little device here. Okay, so put it in the middle. Okay, so that is working its way up. I, I haven't tore any pads yet, Bill. I didn't pull a CPU like you. No, we're just going to... Um, I couldn't find my USB-C power thing, so I ordered another one from Amazon. Because I, I can't be bothered to hunt for it. I don't know where it is. It's very frustrating. I have a bin of power cables that I use for the power supply and my meter and stuff. And the cable should have been in there. I cleaned it out and I thought I only got rid of the cables I don't use. But it turns out there's cables in there I do, don't do use. And the cables I use are not in there. So... I am going to get a another one. So it's at 118, 120. We're going to see if it'll pull this. We can lift this connector off. Now, this capacitor right here has, this capacitor here has leaded solder on it because um, I did some testing with it when I first got this unit. All right, that's the fume extractor in the background. It's at 174. She had one of them little infrared heat guns. I don't think the thermal camera will scan it and get up high enough. Do you think that the, the MOSFETs can have parasitic capacitance? It, it could very well be, but um, if you look at the, if I look at that board, unless this ship right here is a dual MOSFET, dual MOSFET package, then there's really no MOSFETs on here. There's just transistors. There's not really any MOSFETs on there. So, unless that's a dual MOSFET package, I'll have to do some more um, examination with the part numbers, but I wasn't sure if there was any uh, MOSFETs actually on there. I don't think they're dual MOSFET packages because they're 8-pin. Normally a dual package is a 6-pin, in my experience anyways. Okay, so maybe I should flow a bunch of low melt on there. What do you think I should flow a bunch of low melt? How people feel about that. I know Phil, he loves low melt. Bill puts low melt on everything. That's like his favorite thing in the world. He buys it by like 600 foot rolls. It's huge rolls of low melt solder. Sometimes he heats it up and dribbles it on himself like candle wax. He's weird.
So it's at two. Oh, you know what? Oh, that stinks. It didn't save my temperature from yesterday. Makes sense though. So I got the 220 and stopped. But I got the 220 pretty quick, so it shouldn't take too long. And hopefully I can get this on here. So we're at 244. Uh, could someone, does someone know what? Uh, yeah, I know a lot of easier ways to remove it too. I'm having fun. Just like you have fun revolving a switch CPU, I'm going to have fun doing this. When I'm done, I'm going to go knock off the entire power circuit for the CPU so I can be like you, Phil. I will probably wreck BQ because BQ is right over this heater. So I have a good feeling that I'm going to wreck all the stuff around BQ. Because BQ's got lead solder on it. So I have faith that I'm going to wreck that. station flux is starting to bubble it's at 286 yeah i don't even know if this is a viable method of doing this this is just an experiment this is um uh, This is just uh, just a fun little experiment to see if this even does anything. I, mean, I was pleasantly surprised how it did. It helped with the USB-C connector, USB-C port. Not a method I would use to change it every time, but it was interesting. Yeah, it's just... I mean, the scale of this is so small, it's interesting to see if you could, you know, do things like this with a little preheater. It's at 310. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of hot air. Off of my tweezers. Find out what this is.
Try to tease us down with a little bit of hot air. I think I melted it too bad. I had too, I used the hot air too much. Let me see if I can get this guy back on his path. All right. So I'm going to. Unplug that heater. Let that cool down. Hopefully that did it. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying to. I have solder on the pads. I don't know. It's moving a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I probably it's not my, my first time changing that connector in the first place, so I'm not sure, you know, what's going on with it. Um, looks like I may have moved something on the bottom. I'm not sure. I'll have to check that out in a second. Let's move that out because that's hot. Let's check the bottom of this here. So. No, I thought that six pin chip moved. It may have moved a little bit, but I don't see anything too out of place. Well, that chip looked fine. So, I don't know. Teasing it with the hot air and then using the plate. Probably could have put new solder on it, but you know, it's my first time doing it, so I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely taking some getting used to. I definitely need the other way to power it um, so I can control the heat flow in the heat up time and the cool down time and I need to get used to the menus because in the settings you can set the temperature and then the whole temperature and different things like that um, I saw that in the uh, hey RB how's it going um, I saw that in the in the unit and what I have here is some interesting stuff if I can find it
All right, well, let me slide show them. Okay, I'll have to show this at a. Uh, I'll have to show this at a later time. I uh, someone sent one of the um, supporters of the channel that that you know sends me emails and stuff. Uh, Steve, uh, he's Ratchet Effect in the comments. Um, he was always leaving good comments, and he was in the chat yesterday. He sent me uh, photos of the teardown of this little preheater, and I wanted to show them to you guys, but. I can't get them to open in a slideshow, so I'll have to I'll have to open them. I'll have to put them in my own slideshow and show them that way because I don't want to show off any personal information like emails and whatnot. So well, eleven people in the stream, that's pretty good. It's getting bigger and bigger. So yeah, that um was interesting. Oh, you know what I did? I didn't even catch this until just now. This is funny. Where's it at? Let's look at this. I didn't even catch this. I knocked off the speaker connector. Look at that. Fantastic. So I knocked off the speaker connector in that in that thing. So I'm gonna have to. Uh, Yeah, that's what I want to do. Yeah, hold on. Stay stay in the stream, guys, and get ready for that. Uh, I don't even have credit cards. I don't use credit cards. If I don't have the money, I don't buy it. Um, Yeah, I knocked off that speaker connector, so I get to put that back on now. So I think next time I do the connector, which I will probably try to take this one off, and put it back on again to see if I could use it like a donor board style thing. If I needed a connector, I could pull it off and put it back on. I'm going to try it again to get this off, and then I'm going to replace the solder with leaded solder and fix this speaker connector. So I think that will be the next experiment for this little preheater thing. No, I half wonder if you could change BQ with one of these heaters and a little bit of hot air. I don't know. I can't do it on this one because this one already has leaded solder on it. So that is, that's not an option because it would melt lower and it would and definitely could change it with the preheater. But what I'm wondering is, could you use the preheater to change BQ and avoid a lot less heat to the connector? Oh, come on, Phil. You got to be more careful with that. I hope that you don't get sick, Phil. I don't wish that on anybody. I hope that everything is okay. Um... But the BQ chip, I think that would be an option to change it, you know, because that is a pain in the butt. You milk connectors, um, all that stuff. So I, I wonder if you heat up BQ from the bottom with the preheat plate and then tease it with a little bit of hot air, like maybe 300 degrees, and then pull the chip, change the solder, and then put the chip back on, put a new chip on. Um, so, so you are going to stream tonight, Phil, after the premiere? I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I would, yeah, I would be careful, Phil. So, let me know how that turns out. But, yeah, that's, that's where we are. So, it is possible to do different things with the preheater that is remarkably small i mean it's 1.2 inches by 1.2 inches so i wouldn't i wouldn't have thought it i really wouldn't have thought it. this was ratchet effect was the one who recommended this to me and i'll be honest i was like why would someone want this what what purpose does this serve and i have found a purpose 
that it um, is is worth having. So, so yeah. So I'm gonna call it there, guys. Thank you guys for stopping by. Um, it needs a little bit more testing with it. I'll do some more testing with the with the preheater, and we'll find out if we can do more stuff with it. Like, I want to know, like, can we pull a PMIC, like a max IC, and then put a rebald one back on? Like, can we do all that? That's what I want to know. Because connectors is great because they melt and the USB port, whatever. But BGA chips, that is a... The BGA chips, that is interesting. So I'm wondering if, like, it will work for pulling BGA chips. So, LCD connector, it might be able to do something with, too. I'm not sure. I'll have to check it out. Thank you guys for watching, and have a